not the usual view for a video intro. Um, I'm obviously traveling. I've had time to put together a little video though about attack angle and short game and maybe some details that aren't being explained well enough as yet as to how you can be steep or shallow, have lean, not have lean and still strike the ball great around the greens. Now don't forget if you don't subscribe already please do so. Hit the bell, hit the like, leave a comment below, let me know what you're going to see on the channel going forward and I will film it for you. Okay here we are again. Um, so the uh, attack angle trend thing just keeps rolling and rolling. Um, so I did a, a little bit of a video on it on some stuff that kind of that trying to explain some of the things um i think joe's awesome he's very very good at, at what he does right now i've got this horrible feeling that the information isn't complete or not nearly complete enough to actually get a lot of success now some people are going to try and increase attack angle and hit the ball much better uh, because they were way too shallow um, but some people are going to be in a decent place already try it and what they do won't necessarily match up with what they're trying to do by getting steep and it could be an absolute nightmare so i thought it'd be good to do a quick video on a, a couple of slightly different topics maybe show you some of the pieces that need to be in line to get this to work uh, most effectively and show you maybe some things that are misunderstood misinterpreted and maybe not fully represented properly um, at this point from my point of view. So um, I've got Todd Clements up on screen, uh, plays on DP World Tour, very nice action, uh, very good chipper of the golf ball. Um, funny enough, last session he was, if anything, a touch too shallow. You know, three, four down, my window's always been five to 10. Um, seven's a really nice on a quad, specifically. Um, and at three or four down, he was still chipping at high quality, he just wasn't quite as sharp as it could have been. Uh, maybe wasn't stopping the ball quite as quickly as he could. A little bit too much stuff getting trapped between club and ball. So um, that's Todd. So it's really pure. I've put some yellow lines on this first window that I'm going to draw your attention to. And I've run through. I'll just show you where the lines are. I've tried to get them on the edge of the bottom groove, not nearest to the hosel. So I've done pretty good on most of them. I think that one's slightly off. It's slightly long, so I won't use that. Um, but the rest of them are pretty good. So. As you can see, it's a pretty solid action. There's nothing untoward going on, right? It's pretty smooth, uh, no jerky movement. It's just a really nice delivery. Good contact with the ground, nice and clean, but there is contact there. You can see the ground does get disturbed. Okay, so the, the purpose of that first video is to show you what I've measured specifically, um, because we'll go onto the graphic in the middle and you'll see these lines all over the place. Now, you know what the other lines are for, I have put a couple of angles on here. So between this line, the first yellow line and the third, the angle is 41 degrees. I'm gonna say, so across that period of time, if we drew a straight line, obviously it is curving. If anything, in this first phase, it is slightly steeper than 41. In the second phase here after this middle yellow line, it is less than 41, but the net is 41 degrees down. All right, that is a lot of angle. By the time we get into here, there's a little bit of confusion because of extra numbers there, but if we go here and go between um, the top of this line and the top of the next line, you'll see we're down to 15 degrees, just shown on the side there. All right, so we've changed pretty significantly, 41 degrees, down to 15 pre-impact. Um, by the time the club gets here, these two lines, it will be less than 15. I think I had it measured at about seven, it just got too busy. Um, but seven was pretty good and then between the last frame pre-impact and a few frames post-impact we have a three degree up attack angle so we've gone from 41 down 15 i know this one's seven and three degrees upwards uh, by the time the club is a few frames post-impact all right so the rate of change which is a key phrase um, is relatively high now, it could be higher but it's changing, right? The, I think maybe one of the biggest misconceptions right now when people are talking about these steep attack angles is that if we're at 15 here at delivery, then there's some expectation that it will stay at 15 for a period of time. It doesn't, it changes so, so quickly. Um, we can go from seven final frame pre-impact to a few posts to three, that's a 10 degree change over a very, very short space of time. Okay, so that attack angle is changing constantly. 
and it's changing rapidly at certain points in the swing. You probably say it's quite rapidly throughout the whole motion, to be honest with you, going from 41 down to 15 to seven to three. In, in that two or three feet of club head travel is fairly significant, right? So please, attack angles do change. It is not a constant. I've banged the drum for a long time about there being no straight lines in these shots or, or any shot for that matter. And this is one where it is most crucial that the club is not delivered on a straight line, whether it is from this face on view or it's from down the line or above, whatever. It's always curving. Yeah, that can only help. So we'll shift on to the third image on the right here. And I have put a circle. I've gone with like the best fit, perfect circle that I could manage. Obviously, the swing isn't perfectly circular. There is somewhat of an elliptical nature to it. So it's close. All right, I couldn't find an ellipse tool. So I've got a perfect circle. It's close. I'll run you through here and just show you why I've got this circle in place. So what I want to show you initially is what would happen if the radius of this circle was to change on approach to the golf ball. If I start to expand this out, the sense point of the circle is remaining the same, right? Certainly the fixed point. But if I start to expand this circle out, you'll see that the low point would move beneath the surface of the ground. And that contact point on the ground will start to move further away from target, right? So if I move this down, I've got it middle of the board to start, by the way. So if we went but great contact here, if I continue to move it lower, lower, hopefully, there we go. You'll see that at the level I was at here, the contact point with the ground will be, I don't know, that's probably eight inches behind the golf ball. Um, just by making the circle wider. So I've not moved the low point forward. Effectively, I haven't really moved the low point back. I've just moved everything wider, which has made things significantly deeper. All right, so no crazy movements from the golf to do this. There'll be some wrist action stuff going on to make the radius wider. It could be the arms lengthening out at an inappropriate moment. But just making the radius of the swing as a whole wider will move low point back as it gets wider. So that's something to understand. Um, conversely, if I were to make the radius of the swing narrower, it would move the contact point forward, potentially, compared to where it could be, and it would move things up. All right, so to get the club out of the ground, you could, in theory, make the radius of the swing narrower. Let's just move forward here. Let's show you what happens when I move the circle forwards. Okay, so I can start to move everything further forwards. The radius stays the same. And you'll see that I would be hitting the golf ball further back on the circle. And this is something that Joe's talking about. If you move the low point further forwards, you'll hit the golf ball further back on this radius, on this circle. And effectively, the attack angle will become steeper you know, without doing anything crazy. So just by moving everything further forwards, you'll create a steeper attack angle. But you will notice that as you do that, the contact point on the golf ball will get higher. Okay, so all remained equal. I just move everything forward to keep my levels the same. I'm going to hit a higher up on the golf ball. Now, that's a great problem to have if you stick the club in the ground already. All right, so if you stick the club in the ground three or four inches behind the golf ball and you start to move low point as a whole forwards, then yet you are going to strike it more solid. If you already strike it solid and you try moving low point further forwards, you're going to start catching a lot of golf ball too high. It's going to be thinned. Um, which means you would then need to start to lower the low point to get the club on the ground effectively. Right, so you can kind of see where I'm going. Now let's say for a second you did have the low point way forwards and you move things lower to get that contact. If the club continued on this circle, it would end up way underground. So you would have to change the radius of the circle, as I mentioned previously, to get the club off the ground. Or you would have to start to raise everything up together. All right, so you start to move this midpoint of the grip higher, which majority of players are going to do. That midpoint of the grip is going to generally follow the rotation. There's the turns and the tilts of the swing without doing anything crazy with your arms, right? So it's perfectly manageable. But just to kind of give you a bit of a red flag, if that low point is intended to be way forwards, you are going to have to do something. You're going to have to get something to get the club curving out of the ground faster than it would if it were on something close to a perfect circle. So you have to change the shape of the swing um, or pull that circle up pretty damn quick. Okay, because you'll see if I go back to this first video. Yeah, Todd does a pretty good job of having this club continue to curve around fairly uniform. A second one, obviously, heel of the club, or that hosel where I've measured to. 
stays pretty uniform, right? Nothing crazy going on. Uh, let's run through this a little bit further. So we've got that depth that we're talking about. And that would be it for that graphic. Okay, so um, if you're going to move low point forward, it, it helps if you're coming from a place where your low point is deep and too far back. Okay, if it's deep and too far back. If your low point doesn't really get that deep, you've got a very shallow bottom of the swing and it's too far back, then you're going to have an easier job than if your low point is quite deep um, and it's too far back. Um, shifting everything forwards will help that player for sure, but you will still stick the club in the ground just further forwards. If you already hit the ground too far back and it doesn't really dig into the ground, you kind of skid it a little bit, fine, move it forwards, you're all good. Um, player that digs too far back though, you're going to have to start to add another component and start to shift things up. Now, as I've said, you could uh, feasibly change the shape of the swing, all right? and that typically is going to come through some kind of wrist action or motion which is something a number of good players do. They'll start to rehinge the club. Um, they may start to rotate the wrists and forearms more to rotate the club up the plane faster. Um, some, depending on the grip, will have this kind of flexion to extension move, which will change the shape of the swing rapidly also. Uh, or you could start to flex lead elbow, which is shift everything up a little bit more. And then you start to do things that won't change the shape of the swing so much um, as far as like, wrist down go, but it will lift everything up, which is more like push up with the legs, push up with the hips, push up with the shoulders, whatever it is. Yeah, or even, as Hovland does, shift away from the golf ball to provide space for things. All right, so there are a number of ways to get it done. Um, typically, I would prefer some degree of rise of the middle of the glove. So you'll see Todd's grip here does rise, but it does so somewhat naturally. His left arm isn't changing flex, but you see his left shoulder is raising up. And it's moving away from the ball. Okay, so giving me a little bit of space, just changing the shape of things a little bit. Some players, myself included, will tend to rehinge more. So I'll start to go more this way, which gets the club back up off the ground. Now it is a change of shape of the swing, for sure. Um, it would just be my personal preference. Yeah, I could also go weak grip, so more palm to palm, and start to go this way with my lead hand. And that would narrow the arc up too. Now, um, one thing that is for sure is that from, let's say, last shaft parallel, which is a little bit short where the video runs here, the middle of the grip isn't really rising. It's not dropping as quickly as it was earlier in the downswing, but it's actually going pretty level. If you start to pull up at this point and you shift things way forwards as far as contact point with the ground goes, you're going to thin it. All right, so that upward phase has to happen very very late it's probably with Todd happening right about here and it starts to rise there's more of a sharp shape to it up there all right so the change in the hand path or the curve of the hand path should be at impact and into post impact to get the club off the ground without changing the shape of the circle of the swing all right so the timing of things is crucial um, Joe's obviously fielded a bunch of questions, you know, what bounce do I need? Well, if you do this effectively, your bounce can be very, very low, right? That's not going to save you. Um, why does the club not stick in the ground? Well, hopefully I've explained why the club doesn't stick in the ground. Okay, the rate of change of the attack angle takes care of it to a degree. The positioning of the circle takes care of it to a degree. The shape of the circle takes care of it. Now, some blend of those three factors will stop the club digging into the ground. Um, ultimately, some players just will stick it in the ground. Now, if you're going to do that, stick it in the ground the right side of the golf ball, which would be post. Um, some of this is going to sound converse to a lot of things I've spoken about in the past as far as being able to make ground contact before the golf ball. Now, it depends on the perspective we're looking at. Do you want the greatest margin for error um, on the majority of turfs? Uh, I think that the average golfer is very suited to having a large margin for error. So making contact pre-golf ball with a delivery that will not stick into the ground, for me means a long flat area on the ground that you can get away with it. It doesn't mean the club's not curving, right? It's just not going in incredibly steep, bouncing up off the ground. It's going in with enough steepness, skidding for a period under the golf ball, then back up the other side of the golf ball. I think that's a pretty nice way to chip for the majority of players. Yeah, it requires very little precision. And it also removes one of the factors that I saw consistently amongst the worst chippers, and that was too much force across the grip. Right, with the intent of trying to stick the club on the ground somewhere ahead of the golf ball. 
that force across the grip. If anyone's seen any of my more detailed stuff, you see on the Wedge Matrix website, um, you will see that force across the grip is a bit of a killer. In my mind, yep, conditions, you know, trail arm issues, a lot of pushing, generally means players are trying to get the club on the ground too far ahead of the golf ball in the wrong way. All right. Now, if you're going to get it ahead of, on the ground ahead of the golf ball, do it with the pivot, do it with the body positioning, don't do it with the trail arm because that is the disaster. That is the force across the grip that changes all kinds of things, which makes it incredibly hard to strike the ball well. Now, I started to create something on my baseline model that creates a big margin for error. Yep, you probably won't spin it as much as you possibly could. Depends on the environment you're playing in, but you'll get away with an awful lot more. And it still produces an attack angle that's probably five degrees down. All right, you can be four, five, six down, hit the ground before the golf ball, still hit a great shot with moderate spin. All right, it doesn't have to be 15. We don't want it at ones, twos. No, that's no good either. But you can have downwards. You can hit the ground before the golf ball and still hit a good shot. All right, so if you're interested in that, go and check it out by all means. Um, hopefully this video has just helped to fill in a few of the gaps, maybe. I'm sure Joe has all sorts of stuff coming. It's great. You should sign up to his Patreon. It's all in a good cause, raising money for um, animal charity. Uh, show your support there. But just do be fully aware that I don't think the picture is complete yet. I know he's getting there with it. Uh, I just wanted to give my spin on where it's headed.